Film is a medium that transports. All I have to do is pop myself in front of the TV to watch a movie, and I can just enjoy it. Whatever place the film takes me to. Movies have always been an escape. It gives you a whole new world to be in. I have a rekindled love affair with movies. Welcome, everyone, to this episode of Real to Real Talk. I am Sergio Barrera, and it's time once again to get together to talk about all things movies. Joining me, as always, are the other Real to Real Talkers, Susan Chisholm and Paul Britton. And team, today we are going to talk movie assignments. It's one of our favorite segments where we torture one another or maybe, you know, share with one another uh, movies that we've <laughs> seen. And so, yeah, I'm excited to uh, get together once again with the two of you and talk movies. I was going to say, depending on the person, a torture is, is pretty appropriate. <laughs> depending on the, the person and the movie, of course. So There you absolutely. go. I'm in the movie. Yeah. So I hope the two of you have had a great week since the last time we met um, and are looking forward to talking about movies today. It's been a movie-filled week for me. I, I took the week off uh, since we last, uh, last met, unexpectedly so. And I have been doing nothing but watching movies. And so uh, you're, you'll be happy to know I'm at 115 of my goal of now 150 movies in 2020 nice. that I've not seen. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I'm excited to once again be with y'all. Uh, so the way we do movie assignments, if you're joining us for the first time, is if Susan and I have watched a film and Paul hasn't, then in a movie assignment episode like this, we will assign him that movie and each of us have been given a movie to watch. Uh, again, two of us have to have seen it for the third to receive it. And the, what a difference in movies we have to talk about today, team. So I say we just jump right in. What do y'all think? Yeah, yeah let's, let's do go it. For it. All right. So the two of you assigned me which movie. I'm going to let y'all 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 tell the world. So give uh, the, Eternal Sunshine, the yeah. thoughtless mind. Eternal Sunshine of the Spots in Less Mind, right? And Eternal and this is uh, a callback to our Charlie Kaufman uh, episode. So, Indeed it is. Yeah. Eternal Sunshine <laughs> of the Spotless Mind, starring Jim Carrey and Kate Winslet, mm -hmm. um, was a very interesting choice uh, because, uh, released in 2004, this was a movie that was sort of all the rage because it was one of the early roles that Jim Carrey had that was so counter to type uh, in terms of uh, what we're used to seeing from him. Uh, Kate Winslet, of course, uh, came to fame uh, with Titanic and has done some fantastic work since. Uh, that's an understatement. Uh, and so as I jumped into this movie, I, I want to set the scene for the two of you because I need you to really understand that the time at which I watched it and the setting, I think played a huge role in the way I received this movie. Uh, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, I watched, uh, it was about 10.30 at night when I decided to sit, and I'm a night owl, so I understand, I'm fully awake. Okay. Um, but it was just myself and, and, and no one else. Everyone else had gone to bed, mm -hmm. uh, the dogs had gone to, you know, uh, down for the night. So it was just me in my living room watching this movie. And the reason I share that is because it's one of those rare moments when I can really assimilate myself into a movie 1000% with no interruptions. And when it was done, I was like, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get through this moment right now in this show without getting mm. emotional. Um, yeah. This is the kind of film that when Charlie cut, which I didn't read a lot into it because again, I was just so heavy by itself um, in, in terms of, you know, Charlie Kaufman's mindset or anything that was written about it. But Charlie Kaufman has been through a very, very, uh, he must have, must have been through a very, very challenging life when it comes to his movies and the way he puts himself into them, you know, the, the, his heart into his work. Right. Um, the story is the story of a guy who discovers that his former girlfriend has 
gone through a procedure that, that, that allows for all memories of him and their relationship to be wiped from her mind. Uh, there's a very telling scene right in the beginning where she doesn't recognize him at all. And uh, he's, of course, trying to figure out what's going on. And eventually, and it happens very early on, he discovers what has occurred. Um, there, there's a, a couple in this movie that I don't think gets enough screen time uh, that lets him know what has occurred. Right. Clementine, uh, his, his love. Um, and their, their relationship got rocky. Um, yeah. And so um, he finds out what has occurred. He goes to the same uh, company that did this uh, procedure and decides that uh, he wants the procedure done to himself. He wants all um, memories of Clementine to be erased. And the movie is the journey through that process. Mm -hmm. And as these memories are fading, he reaches the point of believing or not believing, but realizing that he doesn't want this procedure to move forward. Um, and, and the backward steps that the process takes are a beautiful film, um, uh, not trick, but it's, it's a great approach to the story because you're going backwards. You're going from their most recent and final fight all the way back to the beginning where they first met. Mm -hmm. And as each memory wipes away, I'll tell you, I don't know what my mindset was when I sat down to watch this movie, but every memory that was ripped away from him as the process proceeds oh God. just broke my heart I over just, and over and over. Oh God. So, what did we do, Susan? What did we do? <laughs> no, but understand, I... <laughs> understand oh. that I'll just jump to the end. It's a brilliant film. Okay. It's a brilliant film. Yeah. Uh, and I, I'm glad I was as raw as I was. Mm. Because I don't know that I, I don't know that people would appreciate this movie or would even have put themselves in a position to watch it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, you know, I don't, I, I haven't taken a look at what the numbers were in terms of how, how this film did at the box office, but I don't see it as the kind of film that people are going to rush out to the theater to see. And so as the story progresses, I found myself just getting rawer and rawer and rawer. And it does end with some hope. You know, there is the, the, they find a way, they find a way to, to try to preserve uh, at least the kind of memory that will trigger them to meet again. And they do, because that's where the film starts. Um, mm -hmm. And so you're left with hope, but it's after mm -hmm. you've been drugged through the muck for two mm -hmm. hours, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it was very cathartic to watch. Uh, I have been very fortunate that in my life I've had... Um, uh, great success with the relationships in my life. And uh, I posted a, just a couple of days ago, uh, Jen and I will be celebrating 28 years married uh, this month on Halloween, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. And um, so when you have that type of, of uh, great love in your life, you, 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 movies like this really cast that sort of, of mindset of, Ooh, wow. Like whew, lucky me. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and not just, in in relationships that are based on you know you, you know love and your partner but just i mean this could have been if you think about the procedure anybody who has some sort of negative memories they could use this to wipe it out right yeah. and yeah. so yes a story with a concept that thankfully isn't possible or maybe not thankfully but but I, it just hit it just landed square on my heart and I was quite emotional by the time the yeah. final scenes were playing out. Yeah. Um, yes, I cried. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and it it was, but it was one of those, it, was, it wasn't like a sobby, sobby cry because I didn't want to alarm Jen. But <laughs> it was like tear streaming, mm -hmm. you know, kind of like <laughs> your, your breath is hitchy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but that's the power of this film. Yeah. Charlie it's Kaufman, a, yeah. you know, he's good <laughs> yeah i know that's i mean i yeah. just i i didn't go into this movie thinking i was going to enjoy it i'm not going to lie mm -hmm. uh but not only i i don't know that i'll put myself through it again but not, right. not only did i enjoy it i highly recommend it i really think people should see this film uh 16 and, years later it still hits right. 
Yeah. Uh, um, so just to answer your question, 74 mm -hmm. million on 20 okay. million budget. So yeah. it was, a, you know, they don't make movies like this anymore. Like you're, you're not giving $20 million uh, mm -hmm. uh, or a studio's not giving $20 million to somebody to, to go make a movie and then make, have it grow 74 and everybody be like, yeah, you know, like it's just <laughs> that they don't, that this is not into, that's not what they're into. Like, right. you know, they might buy this movie at Sundance maybe, but that would be the right. extent of it. But yeah. um, I think this movie, uh, benefits greatly from Charlie not directing it. I I yeah, don't you mentioned that. I don't think that you get the uh ending that this movie deserved without with Charlie directing it. And yeah. You know. So. It's yeah, and and it's one of those it's just it it's really easy to keep up with. I could see where some people would think it's hard to follow, but for whatever reason I was able to follow it closely. Uh, I loved the the imagery of the memories fading, you know, and and how he he knows of people's existence, but he can't see their face. And it, mm -hmm. yeah, it was just every every inch of this film from beginning to end is well thought out, well put together. Um, and and I, I didn't sit down with this notion of resisting it, but I, I I didn't have a lot of high hopes. And I even thought to myself, I hope I'm not watching this too late. It was the perfect moment. My 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 head was in a place <laughs> where this movie landed. And when it was over, I was like, I'm gonna go play some video games because I'm happy. <laughs> so <laughs> Sure. Whatever so, yeah. you can do to get in a happy headspace, that's what you're gonna <laughs> Exactly. And uh, I sure didn't go to read my Twitter, that's for sure. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. so yeah, so I have to thank you. Uh, you both of you, once again, have uh, have introduced me to a film that I probably wouldn't have chosen to see. I know I wouldn't have chosen to see myself. Yeah. And uh, as goofy as we get sometimes, uh, this one was this was a big one. I, I mean, a, a, a big enjoyment for me. I really enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, it, it hit home. It hit home. There were tears streaming, so... That excellent, good. Yeah. That's good. All right, we'll see y'all next week. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna go to Susan next. Uh, Susan, you had to watch one of. Well, I don't know if I speak for you, Paul, but this is one of my favorite all-time films. So I'm I mean, it's to hear. it's it's definitely top hundred, uh, possibly top fifty. Yeah, I love that you've seen so many <laughs> that you can have a top hundred. So I <laughs> I have fantastic. seen. Hold on. Oh, you I'll tell you listen. exactly how many movies I've seen <laughs> that I vi remember I've seen. And so therefore I, I, I joined Letterboxd and I went through and rated oh. everything. Um, I have seen, where's my number? It's uh, 3,003 movies at this point. Wow. There you go. All right. Just turn that list over to Susan and uh... <laughs> catch up. <laughs> 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 wow i don't know that I've, i i know i've not counted but that's that's um yeah I, oof, wow all right susan so we're gonna come to you for our <laughs> second round of movie assignments talk to us about what you saw i um was given the movie heat um the 1990, 1995 right film with um robert de niro and al pacino mm -hmm. um because i wanted explosions <laughs> <laughs> She literally said that we were trying to figure out what to give her, and she said, yeah. "Like I'll even take explosions." And I was like, "Oh, heat! <laughs> there we go. We're we're gonna give you heat." Absolutely. <laughs> so, I, I I watched this. I watched it. Um, I don't have a really great story about it. I watched it, um, and I spent a portion of the film trying to figure out where I had heard Al Pacino's voice before because there was something in his voice that reminded me of a different, of a voice actor in a cartoon film that it actually wasn't him at all, but it was like, that was distracting, but that wasn't, you know, wasn't <laughs> enough to distract from the movie. It was, it was just like, every once in a while, I'd be like, what the fuck? Where have I heard that before? It turned out to not be him at all. So um, I, we watched, I watched the movie and it was, um, it, you know, if you know about them if you don't know about the movie it is um about basically like two sides of the story from like the cop side and from the you know gang leader i guess not being there he, he was in charge of, of all the robbers and stuff like that so they're they're fantastic at everything Please don't do this. um so they it starts out with a heist that goes wrong because they hire this guy who is a complete nut job 
and he basically ruins everything. There are explosions, y'all. There's <laughs> um, you know, he 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 is a little bit crazy, and so he kind of goes off the handle and starts killing everybody that's there. And um, you know, later on, you find out that he's he's a serial killer. You kind of you should have known that, but <laughs> he gets you know, and they try to um, when uh, he's they try to stop him. Essentially, they're like you know, kill him so that he's because of what he did. Um, he runs away and escapes, and that's where we find out that he's he's a serial killer later on. But like the entire story was really it, it was based more on like personal life. I, I mean, you see a lot of the high stuff, you see a lot of that, but you also see that the the other side of things, like you see. Um, Hannah's like personal life falling apart because he's obsessed with his job and you know his stepdaughter is not okay <laughs> no. um there there's a lot to this movie and it was like almost three hours long so you'll forgive me if I jump around a bit um <laughs> you know and you see you you see you know Robert Caniero as like the father figure of the heist gang and he's like always trying to make sure everybody's taken care of and he does things for everybody. And he, um, he you know, he, he tries to put things back together. Um, and with, with everything like that, and he sees kind, of, kind of glimpses of his personal life and he's just, he's, he's, he's lonely. And, he, you know, he lives by this decree of, you know, you have to be able to drop everything and run within 30 seconds if you see the heat coming around the corner. <laughs> I probably burned exactly it. Right <laughs> I know no, I butchered it horribly. It, no, it's perfect. No, it's okay. It's okay right because on. I can hear it correctly in my head and <clears throat> it's beautiful. Yeah. Continue. <laughs> okay. So I got it. I got it wrong, but that's okay. Um, you know, and so they, they go for this, this big heist that kind of, again, goes wrong because I, you know, the, you, they get into this huge firefight in the middle of the street and it's just, it's incredible. And I did research on, I did research on it um, because we were talking about, I was talking about it and it was like, this is, it, it's widely regarded as one of like the best gunfight scenes in any movie ever. Yeah. Um, and in different trivia things, like, like the way that he filmed it, the way that the director filmed it, he didn't want to add in like the, the typical thing that they do is they'll, they'll shoot the scene and then they'll add in the, the, the gunshot sounds over top of it in, in post-production essentially. And he didn't, he didn't, um, Michael Mann decided that he wanted to, he put uh, microphones all over, all over the set and caught everything live. So everything you're hearing matches up exactly because it's happening exactly at the, you know, it's, it's not an overlay, which is really neat. And, mm -hmm. and what's even better, and I found out this again in research, like when, when in the fire, in, in the gun battle scene where they're, where they're kind of like, shooting everything and you see um Bell Kilmer character um like take you know he he changes his magazine really quickly and come to find out that that um they show that to marine recruits as a this is how to do it right oh, wow. um yeah i was i was kind of like oh okay listen i love Bell Kilmer a whole lot a whole lot <clears throat> so um that was kind of neat but like there are so many different things about this movie the movie itself um, the story was just fantastic and the, the action was fantastic and I really liked everything about it. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't exactly what I was expecting because again, I have a, I have a tough time with a lot of <laughs> dialogue in terms of like, <laughs> especially when I watch, I didn't watch it. I didn't watch it, um, as I was going to bed. So there was that, so I caught most of the dialogue. <laughs> um, I don't know. That's, that's kind of my impression of it. I was, I was like, Yay, Val Kilmer got away. Um, <laughs> but, and, and so many other things but, about that. But it's like, yeah. I, I mean, are you really happy for Val Kilmer, though? I mean, that's oh, the well, thing about yeah. this movie. That's yeah. the thing about this movie that is so good. Is it's that, bittersweet. Yeah, yeah. I mean, every everybody, it's just everyone self-destructs. Oh, yeah. It, it doesn't yeah. matter who you are, what your situation is, good or bad. It just doesn't matter. In the end, everyone is who everyone is, and it that gets in the way of you actually being happy, and it's, yeah. it's so good. <laughs> it's yeah, so, and and yeah. I, I did want to say that I liked the, I liked the 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 moments of like mutual respect from, um, you know, the from 
Al Pacino and Robert De Niro, they like meet in the cafe and they're talking. And it's like, you can tell they're both know at some point it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they're going to, they're going to face off against each other. And it was like, you know, There's you can tell that they that both, coin. yeah, they both yeah. mutually respect each other. And at the very end too, like, you know, as he's dying and he's holding, you know, they're holding, they're holding each other's hands, like as a mem- member of comfort, like, Hey, this is like respect. You did a great job, but you know, I just was better. <laughs> That's not, but you know what I mean? Like, like oh, yeah. that kind of mutual respect. That, I mean, yeah. That ending that scene is it. just like, holy shit. Oh yeah. It's just Michael like, Mann, that's, yeah. That's Michael Mann's masterpiece in my opinion. Oh, um, it's a, yeah. By far. Yeah. And, and yeah. I, I love all of his work. Um, that scene that you described in the cafe, Susan, <clears throat> is followed by what I think is one of the greatest scenes in the movie where he returns back to the police station and they're like, they dropped us. Like they, they got rid of all their tails and all of yes. the, the surveillance. And <laughs> he's like, like, I had I had coffee with him half an hour ago. <laughs> I love that, that scene. Uh, but this movie also stars the biggest blood blister ever on the elbow of Val Kilmer, if you watch closely. I, I pointed that out to Susan and Paul. I don't yeah. know if you've watched that. Oh, I'm not aware of this. Oh, go back and uh, I'll, I'll, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll give you the scene. Go ahead, uh, Susan. Can I, can I tell him? Did you do some because research? Yes, you can. You. So when when he wakes up, when um, <clears throat> Val Kilmer wakes up in Robert De Niro's apartment because he had a fight with his wife, right? And they're talking about it, and he hands him a cup of coffee, yeah. And he reaches for the coffee. I can't do the right angle. There's just like thing on his <laughs> left elbow, and he's like, it it looks like a fucking head. <laughs> I mean, it's probably like this. Like the size yeah. of a tennis ball. It's a calcium growth from when he broke his arm uh, playing Jim Morrison on the doors, in the doors. And so, oh. yeah, he had to have it surgically removed. But it's yeah. in the film. And yeah, I'll, I'll shoot you the scene, Paul, so you can see. Awesome. Who That's how many see times that? I watched the movie. I told Susan about it. And I said, I watched this movie so many times in such great detail that the day I remember distinctly the day I caught that, I went, whose head is that? Like, it was, yeah. it's huge. It's yeah, huge. yeah, yeah, yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah so not to take anything that. away from the movie itself right. uh, <laughs> no yeah. and it doesn't i mean it, you know because i didn't notice it until you pointed it out and now i'll never see anything else ever <laughs> <laughs> yeah um <clears throat> susan are you familiar with the artist tone look mm-hmm. okay so then you notice that he was in the movie when he entered mm-hmm. when he yeah at the club i i again little moments like that this movie has aged in my opinion so well but yeah. when people see it after i recommend it I, I'll ask him that question of like, did you see Tone Loke? And they're like, who's Tone Loke? And I'm like, never mind. And so. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. But yeah. And and, <clears throat> but, and like and like you said, it did, it has aged well. There's nothing about it that, like, this is always going to be, it's always going to be, you know, a good guy, bad guy mm-hmm. movie. There's not yeah. anything that's going to destroy that or take away from it. There's no, you know, nastiness i guess i mean it's yeah. just it, it's it's a clean it's very clean it's mm-hmm. good guy versus bad guy it's mutual respect yeah. it's really awesome kind of like it has the and greatest al pacino line ever so i don't think i even need to come on oh. no you got it now she's got a great ass <laughs> and you want to put your head all the way up it <laughs> come oh, on. oh my goodness <clears throat> So, so Paul, that was you, so perfect. I love it so much. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm, that's going to be the promo for this episode. On, on social media. Like, if you want to find out what Paul's talking about, tune in. This week. Everyone will know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're, you're basically it's a mega spoiler of the uh, of the podcast if you put that. Yeah, that's funny. No, and and you know, Paul, you know that Susan and I we use uh, uh, the service from our friends at Two Seven to watch movies together, and this was one that we saw together. And I, it was so fun watching her reactions to key points of the film. Um, you know, if you haven't seen the movie by now and we spoil it, oh well. But Wayne yeah. Grove's demise is one of my favorite moments, and mm-hmm. I wish you could have seen Susan's reaction because it was both shock and triumph all at once. Yeah. But, yeah. but again, shouldn't have happened. De Niro, following his own mm-hmm. his ethos, own. should have been the fuck out of Los Angeles. Yeah, but oh, he had to do it. Yeah, Edie's look at the end of the movie. It's like fuck, uh, just go. A, and that's what you feel sorry for is yeah. for Edie is that she's like 
It's oh, the whole the the camera work on her face as he makes the decision to walk away, and then she gets out of the car, and Michael Mann keeps the camera on her. No, it's the distance. It's, oh my goodness, so beautiful. That was heartbreaking. That was yeah. I was like, that yeah. bastard. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I but, yeah, this movie. I'm, I'm re- oh. now we're revisiting. This is definitely in my top fifty. I mean, yeah. it's definitely, it's easy, it's definitely it, in my top fifty. It, so, and I love the way you described it, Susan, because it is about relationships. It's everything. It's, it's very, it's about the human aspect of, of, of a life that we typically wouldn't even consider, and the way, the way lives are destroyed. And, and her, I, I've seen this a movie a hundred times if I've seen it once and every time she decides to stay I still get shocked I still sit there and I go mm. what possesses a person I don't I mean it's it's a great study in the human psyche that that someone would say or find a reason out of maybe sheer loneliness that's probably oversimplifying it but her character decision to stay of course sets up that moment but I, that's the beauty of this movie is you sit there and you go what would I do in that situation? You know? So yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm glad yeah, you enjoyed it. Me too. <sighs> All right. You guys didn't fun. give taco ratings. Did you want to do that before we move to mine or should we sure. save for the end? Sure. Uh, Susan, since we're on yours, let me go ahead and, and defer to you. What would you give? Uh, I'll absolutely make sure I describe it for those of you who are watching for the first time. Shame on you. Uh, we do a five taco rating here on real to real talk. A uh, movie can get a maximum of five tacos. Uh, if you want to throw a bit of extra guac because it's just that much better, then we can do so as well. So, Susan, for the movie Heat, what would your rating be? I'm going to say five tacos. I liked it a lot. Everything, every there wasn't a single thing where I hated or I, I was like, "Ooh, I don't like that." Oh. Gotcha. Even even like the heartbreak in the storyline, it was like it's so, it's oh, so good. But it fit. when it's done it made, well, yeah. yeah, exactly. When oh, it's yeah. done well, it's done right. Yeah, even a young Natalie Portman. I mean, Diamond or the whole cast. Oof. Oof. Danny Trejo oh. Danny Trejo. of Trejo Donuts. Yeah. Um, for myself, for Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless for. Mind, um, I'm going to land at a solid four tacos plus guac. Um, there were some story elements that for me were like, uh, it's not quite a five, but it was that sort of uh, in the I heart. know what you're talking. I know the parts yeah. you're talking about that just don't work and are just, it, it, it's so creepy. It's like. Yeah, it yeah. really is. It's so it really creepy. Is. Yeah. 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 So. All right. So. All right. That brings us to Paul. Yeah. You guys have to announce this one because I'm not going to do it. <laughs> okay. I'll do it. Uh, so how was Child's Play, Paul? <laughs> how do you think it was? Um, we'll start with the good stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's going to be quick. So <laughs> the, the scene where the six-year-old – is making uh, his mom breakfast in bed. <laughs> it, it's very early in the mo- mo- movie. I loved it. It was, pr- I could very easily say of all kids making breakfast for their parent scenes in movies, it's possibly number one, certainly top five all time. Um, it's really funny. Uh, if that's available on YouTube and you don't really ever want to watch Child's Play, A, I don't blame you, or and B, you like watching kids make breakfast. I highly recommend just finding this on YouTube and watching it. It's, it's very funny. It's, it's a nice, cute moment in the movie. And um, cereal was definitely different in the 80s. So <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, it was like OCD. Like, I can't believe this is happening. But like, I can still appreciate the scene. So like, you know, yeah. like, I, I can't, they, they show, there are those like YouTube videos. Like, I don't like, videos of people making food as it is but videos of people of kids making food i can't do it i just i can't watch them it's <laughs> it's too i i can't deal with it in a movie I, it's like i'll accept it but like, this it was a really cute moment um that was it i just everything else in this movie sucked uh there was just nothing remotely redeemable <clears throat> uh and uh it's it's just I hated the concept um I hated the, the acting was shit uh the 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 writing was worse than shit the 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 idea that uh Wormtongue from uh Lord of the Rings we're gonna just open with him transferring his soul into a doll yeah 
without like any like, oh, this is, you know, it's just like here, this is what's going to happen. Yeah. Chew on that. It's like, really? <laughs> You're not going to give us anything? Like just nothing? It's just like all of a sudden the idea that this – it, it, you know, it's it, the, the movie opens with uh, cops chasing down a serial killer, or was it a serial rape? Whatever it was, <laughs> you know, uh, who's played by uh, Worm Tongue from uh, from the Lord of the Rings. Uh, actually, he was good. I'll, I take it back. He was good, but everybody else sucked. Um, the, For those wondering, the, it's Brad Dorif. There you go. Yeah, Dorf, so yeah. um, he, uh, they're chasing him down, and. Uh, he trans he he finds his way into a toy store okay um and like he's like looking for he's like oh he's been shot he's like it like he he transfers his his soul into a doll and then the entire shop blows up somehow that doll makes it out of the explosion somehow like the store just throws all this stuff into a into their garbage bin and a homeless guy takes the doll and sells it to a person in the street and it's just i don't know when you when you describe it like that you sit back and you go that's a pretty stupid concept. it's all stupid that's my no. problem like i i love i love concept Okay, like yeah. I'm not even gonna lie. Like I'll watch a movie just because I love the concept. Actually, it happened. We'll find out in a few minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I never bought into the concept of this movie at all. Like even before I knew I was gonna have to watch it. Okay, so and so already it had. Like I'm not gonna lie. I was going in knowing I was gonna hate this movie. Like there, it was gonna have to do something really special for me to like it. Um, and the fact that the breakfast scene happened so early, I was actually a little scared that, oh my God, I might actually end up liking this movie. Like in spite of the fact that the opening scene was crap. Yeah. Um, (laughs) so, but no, that didn't happen. So there you are. I love the fact that there was a consideration where you were like, oh, it must be working. I was, I was ready. I was ready. Like the little kid is super cute. Um, yeah, but that's it. I mean, I look, you guys knew I was going to hate this movie. So it's not like. You know, yeah. it's not like you gave me a movie saying, you know, uh, here, Paul, you might actually like this. Or we really like this. You should watch this. It was here, Paul, here's a movie we've seen and you haven't. <laughs> you know? yeah. so- and, and I'll take responsibility. This was revenge for some other movies you've made me see. But uh, <laughs> but now the, the travesty of this of this film is that it led to so many sequels and a remake in 2019. Yeah. Um, that just like, what are we doing? What are we doing? Even, I mean, even Bride of Chucky with one of my absolute favorite actors you know, actresses is, yeah, she's the only good part in it. Um, uh, so, Tilly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Ufa. Tilly. Ufa Malufa. Yeah, I tell you. So I almost feel bad, but then I don't. So, um, yeah, Paul, <laughs> is there a, I, I'm, there's got to be a rating. I'm dying to know what you're going to give this movie. I mean, look, uh, <laughs> do are we allowed to do zero? You gave a zero, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're giving absolutely. zero. I was thinking of giving it, like, um, just guac for <laughs> the the kid That's scene doable. but like it's 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 the guac i had this one time i was in las vegas so i was in las vegas <laughs> and i was in a really nice <laughs> really nice casino and it and they had a food court and the food court was amazing like just like they had this really nice ramen place and they had this really um and so I just was for whatever reason in the mood for like a, a really good burrito and, 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 and they had like their stuff sitting out like in their, their pulled pork, they're, they're not the pulled pork, but the, you know, the carnitas looked really yeah. good. And I was like, yeah, that's exactly what I want. So I went and got the, and like, it was like uh, to get the guac, it was like, Normally, like walk is a dollar, and I'm like, okay, sure. But in this case, it, I think it was two fifty. It might have been as much as five dollars, but I that I might be going overboard. I'm going to say it was two fifty. Like I remembered specifically saying that's a lot to pay for guac, <laughs> and so I was like, but I love guac, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. And the guac was the shittiest. Like the burrito was fantastic. <laughs> the guac was the shittiest guac I have ever had in my life. It was just avocado 
processed paste green mm. crap. It was horrible, and it was this tiny little thing. So it was it was two two fifty shitty Vegas uh, guac. So that's all it gets. Oh. I was gonna say, I, and it won't even get that. I, no, I'm gonna give it to it. I'm gonna give it to all it. Right, I'll right. give it to it. That's <laughs> it. Yeah, it had the one scene. I'll oh, give it I, that. I wish we had these published with pictures, and that I, <laughs> we would find like the brownest guac possible that's been sitting out. Well, and... it wasn't brown, but it yeah, was yeah. a color of green that you will know. It was like it was really close to this that the green. Oh yeah. It was just a color a of green, green that is you, it, that's not the color that guacamole ever is. It's just right. never that color. So no, what is this? Gotcha. I think that's an after eighteen. I I'll I'll definitely agree with you yeah. on that. So yeah. So I'm yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna put a challenge out to our viewers and we'll see if it works. Uh, but I think the next time we do movie assignments, uh, we're awesome. gonna let the listeners decide. We're gonna let them suggest three movies and you know, we'll we'll figure out. You know, we'll need lots of suggestions because keep yeah. in mind I have seen three thousand and three movies, but right. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, let's see what we can come up with. So, um, yeah, movie assignments has once again been a whole lot of fun. Uh, I thank you both for uh, the movie you gave me, and I doubt you'll say the same, Paul. So, uh, <laughs> it is what it is. I, yeah. I I I dug this ditch myself by <laughs> seeing way too many movies in my life. It's yeah. Fine. Well, never a bad thing. Okay. All right. Well, that wraps up movie assignments for this week. Uh, remember, you can find us on Facebook. You can also find us on Instagram. Find out what we're watching. Find out what's coming up on future episodes. Talk to us. Let us know your comments. Tell us what you want us to watch. Suggest movies for us. Let us know what you've seen uh, and interact with us there on social media. You can also uh, make sure, well, you can, you're here. So thank you for watching us on YouTube. Please make sure you click that subscribe button if you haven't already and click the notification bell so that you know when our episodes land week to week. Um, with that said, uh, we're going to go ahead and get into our weekly segments. And I'm excited, Paul. I'm going to turn it over to you. What the hell did you watch? All right. So uh, we got a two for this, two for this week. So oh. we're in October. I have decided that a, a genre that I don't typically watch a lot are, are horror movies. I'm just not, mm -hmm. you know, and so Chucky that had that going against it also. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to just, I'm going to try to commit and, and see some horror flicks. Uh, and so this time I went with zombie horror flicks. Cause I actually do like of all the genres that I, that of horror that are out there, the one that I am most likely to enjoy. Well, there's two first is, devil satan stuff i'm um i i i that's very high like i i will almost definitely like that like exorcist omen all those things uh, rosemary's baby all that stuff Th those are the kind of things that yeah i i get into and then zombies are like the second like it, you know and it, it's not 100 percent, but i so i picked two zombie movies um one that i'd been wanting to watch for a really long time and one that just kind of ran randomly popped up in uh in my facebook feed this week and i was like oh I'll, I'll give this a go. So the first one was Dead Snow. Um, and it's out of Norway. And it's Nazi zombies. Oh, well, there yeah. you go. Yeah. So Dead I Snow mean... is about a, a Norwegian uh, village in, uh, in the mountains that, that was close by to a port where the Nazis had set up a boat, uh, like a little, uh, you know, port for their warships whatever and the 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 local villagers turned against them and the the nazis went and camped out in the mountains and you know 50 years 60 years later whatever uh, are now zombies and uh are causing mayhem on a group of friends that are going into the mountains for a win uh, a easter weekend winter sports fun weekend um this movie opens amazing. Like it has a, a, a musical, uh, a piece of classical music that, and it starts with that, and you just you see this woman like kind of running through the, the through the snow, and you don't know what's going, on. and it builds up and builds up, and then there's a the crescendo, and that happens. You know, fantastic beginning to the movie. The concept, I the reason why I wanted to watch this movie because of the concept, I are you kidding me nazi zombies yeah <laughs> come on that's amazing um 
the, there was some little fun interplay between kind of the friends that were show that were coming to the cabin. Um, and then you find out that one of their friends was, uh, w- instead of driving up, was going to uh, cross country ski up because she has, it's her cabin. You know, she has relatives in the close by village. And so she was just going to cross, uh, uh, cross country ski. And, and then you realize instantly, oh, wait, that's the one that we just saw die at the start of the movie. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, unfortunately, it goes downhill very quickly from there. I, I really was excited to watch this movie. And like, I would give the first like 15 minutes easily. I, I would have, I loved the first 15 minutes, but then it leans super, super heavy into gore. Mm. And the, 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 the concept is never fully realized unfortunately um it, it the po- i can even tell you the moment when it starts going downhill is that you know they're they're building the tension they're building the tension it, it becomes night and somebody goes out to the outhouse and she hears noises and stuff and then she goes back and she's like i heard stuff and, blah, 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 blah. and then all of a sudden like she steps inside and there's like a, something behind her and everybody jumps in it's it's just a villager and they never give the villager uh a name, but we'll call him Mr. Uh, Mr. Plot Exposition. That's what his name was. And so he spends like 10 minutes explaining how the, the hills are hard. It, it's just, and from there, it's just, it's straight downhill. I, I it, it, you know, the zombies are strong enough to break a living human skull in half, oh. but if they're attacking you, you can hold them off with like a shovel. Like, you, you know, <laughs> it's like, no, they're, they're going to kill. And ultimately, my biggest problem with this movie was that, like, the zombies kind of win. And, like, if I'm watching a movie about Nazi zombies, no. Like, I can't mm. have the zombie. I understand people are going to die. It's going to yeah. happen. But Nazi zombies have to – can't win. Like, no. Like, you, you need to get rid of Nazi zombies. And, and I, that was a payoff that uh, I, I'm, I'm spoiling the end, sorry. That never happens. The other movie was um, Dead Alive, but it was originally released in New Zealand. Uh, and New Zealand is a hint as to who made the movie as Brain Dead. Um, this was basically Peter Jackson's first ever yep. movie. And this one is a pure zombie comedy movie. Uh, you know, it, it definitely is gory, but like it never, unlike uh, Dead Snow, it never loses the the. It never loses its tone. It it keeps its tone throughout, and and it's it's the but it's definitely the better <clears throat> movie. Um, it was a little more gory than I t- typically like, um, and s- <laughs> for what it is. You know, Peter Jackson's first movie, super, super low budget, blah, 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 blah. It's fantastic. Cool. There were some things in it that just, it, it, it almost goes a little too far for me. Mm. So for me, I liked it. I didn't love it. I definitely was willing to love it. It just, it, it, there were aspects of it that I just, I, and this one I'm not going to spoil. Uh, there were aspects of it that just, it was too much. Um, uh, I'll actually, I will say one thing. Like, there's only so long that you can spend showing somebody killing zombies with a lawnmower. Like, there's there's a certain amount of time that you can do that, and this movie ex- exceeds that time almost threefold. Like, it's mm. just, it's you know, it. That's ultimately my problem with this movie is that it's just too much. And gotcha. so, so there you go. Yeah, but well, I did like it. I do want to say I liked it. So that one got, I give that one three tacos. The other one, because of the concept, I'm giving it two tacos with guac. Just because of the concept, but ultimately execution. If you like those sort of things and you don't mind gore, you might like it, but. Well, I'm always a fan of zombie films. And so I'm I'm always on the lookout for them. Um, I think Dead Snow should receive some extra just for the sheer hilarity of the poster. (laughs) Exactly. Why die? That yes. is amazing. Yes. That this is, this is my this is my problem with the movie is that everything about everything up until Mr. Plot Exposition shows up is fantastic, including but not limited to the concept, the poster, everything. It's just <laughs> fantastic. And then Mr. <clears throat> plot Exposition shows up, and it's just it it like it's like we don't need plot exposition here for this movie. Like yeah. it's certainly not this much plot exposition and certainly not delivered in this 
campy, lame of a way. Like, yeah. there's got to be a better way to get Nazi zombie plot exposition out there. I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. Very interesting selections this week, <laughs> Paul. I'm looking. I, I like the fact that you're going to continue watching horror films this month. Yeah. Uh, so I'm looking next uh, week. That's I'm super gonna... excited. Oh, excellent! Well, I am excited. I, I already as know well. what I'm doing next week, and I'm super excited. I, uh, you know, it, we've got a nice. first for uh, what the hell did I just watch for next week? So, oh gosh, I'm tempted to ask you to tell me later so that I can watch it too. But um, yeah, we're gonna I, have. I, I, I absolutely would. Yeah. Uh, hey, I'll definitely we'll, tell you if you want to know. We'll we'll um, we'll definitely have to find time to watch some of these uh, great picks that you bring us together. <laughs> so. All right. Well, that's this week's uh, What the Hell Did I Just Watch? Uh, Paul, we thank you as always. And now we're going to get on to our second second segment, which is Susan Finally Saw. Susan, I'm excited to know what you're bringing us this week. So I, I had a plan in mind um, to watch a movie. And then um, again, my kid, my kid got, got a hold of me and asked me to watch something that he's been wanting to watch. Okay. Um, it's it's actually, it was really good. I, I was kind of surprised. It was, it's an animated film um, and it's called Nine, just the number oh, nine. yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. I cannot, yeah, yeah. And it's really, I, I, I can't even really, it, it's, it's a good movie. So it's, so you, you have really great voices. Um, you, uh, Elijah Wood is one of them and uh, Jennifer um, Connelly and you you hear little glimpses of it so so the story essentially is that um these guys are little um like burlap kind of rag dolls mm -hmm. and they all have their own unique personalities they wake up and humankind has been is is, is gone it's dead and because of the machinery that they've created basically they, they killed they killed themselves essentially killed themselves out and you have your introduction to a character that's he's just he's the scientist and he talks about like he created all these rag dolls mm -hmm. and he, he hand stitched them and everything like that and um he's he you know in the beginning like that's what he's doing he's like stitching he's stitching it together and he writes the number you know the number nine on the back of it and then when, when nine wakes up you know and, and all of the 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 rag dolls there are obviously nine of them um and the story is that you know they go through and they they kind of meet each other like they didn't know each other they they're creating themselves like the first the first other ragdoll you come across is uh number two and he's met by he's voiced by martin landau and he like gives a squeaky like a like out of a doll like a voice box mm -hmm. so that number nine can talk and so they kind of go through and they work together and you find out that like number one is kind of the you know crotchety old guy that just wants to play it safe and then you know number nine is the young like upstart he wants to do everything he wants to rescue the ones that have been taken and the machinery wants them all gone so so there, it's kind of a, it's not like a rescue story like you know people get kidnapped and they go rescue them and of course you know number nine does this thing where he he triggers the machine that's was made to create other machines mm. and of course is smart it's it's just i think it's it's called the brain and they you know, through they have to basically rescue and fight and get through. And you know, these little rag dolls are little, you know, little guys, and they're fighting against these machines and stuff like that. And so, you know, it doesn't. It does have a happy ending, um, bittersweet, I guess, happy ending. Um, but it's really good, and, and you can see um, the way that everything was, the way that it was was animated. Everything, the the emotions are clear on the face of the sack boy. That you know, ragdoll sack boys from a game, but <laughs> sorry. Oh, but I knew what you meant. So, <laughs> so that yeah, like, and, that and, like and a good punk band name, the Sack Boys. <laughs> it's there's a there's a there's a video <laughs> game called Little Big Planet, and and the the character is called the Sack Boy. You should look it gotcha. up. <laughs> so yeah, and so they go through, kind of they team together, even though they don't really know each other, and. and they don't know, but you have like the old crotchety guy, number one, that's like the, he's in charge of everything. And he's of course, like, because of his um, bullheadedness, I guess, you know, he gets, he like stuff happens and he, he, he's basically like part of the cause of why everything goes down sideways, but it's a good, it's really good. I, I enjoyed it. My kid was very happy that we finally decided to go ahead and watch it. So cool. 
Oh, cool. Yeah, that's one that when it came out, I really wanted to see it. I just never got around to it, and I still haven't gotten around to it. That's on my list of stuff. There was I a lot of buzz around it when it came out, when it was set to come okay, out. Okay, listen, when when the when the the theatrical trailer has Coheed and Cambria playing, <laughs> it's definitely it's like oh that catches your attention because that's not something normally you'd see, and it's it's like it's not. I don't want to say it's a kids movie because it's not really. Right. It's like a you know, an older kids movie. Right. Um, yeah. Because there are concepts in it that are definitely. And that's, old that's older. why I ended up not going to see it was because at the, my son was two uh, when it came out and oh, it yeah, was no. just, and it was just like, we had just started to take him to movies and it was, and, and so like, it, that was a time in my life where I just did not get to go see as many movies as I would have liked, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I mean, I recommend it for sure. I think, um, it, it is again. It's not a. It's it's not a small kids movie, but it's definitely mm-hmm. a younger, younger movie. So sweet. Yeah. Excellent. I uh, I remember when it was first. Uh, the trailers were first out. I I remember thinking to myself, not a chance in hell. Uh, but I've <laughs> heard good things, and so I'm I'm glad it, it popped up into our show because I wouldn't have thought of it to be honest. So. Very, very nice. All right. Well, uh, thank you, uh, Susan, for that edition of what, uh, what, uh, or Cameron finally saw. And I mean, (laughs) Susan finally saw. (laughs) There's an inside joke there somewhere. I know. Yeah. Well, her son, son, remember? uh, Oh, okay. All right. right, Okay. 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 Gotcha. I I thought you mentioned his name. My joke fell. Okay. But uh, no, thank you for this week. Mm. Susan finally saw. We always look forward to finding out what you're going to bring us next. So we'll look forward to that. All right, we'll take a moment then to do what I like to call real-time rewind, and that's just me reminding you of certain films that are out there that I hope you've seen, and if you haven't, you got to give them a try. And I'm going to go way back on this one. Uh, Because of a movie that I saw earlier this week, I love a good mob movie, and I saw a movie called Kill the Irishman. Uh, That's not the movie I'm going to remind you of, but it always, when I see a, a good, solid mob movie, I always think back to my absolute favorites and while goodfellas is up there and others such donnie brasco brasco and so forth i want to remind you that out there and this is going to be two movies that i want to remind you are out there um it's just it's the the um the pinnacle for me of all mob movies is the godfather and the godfather part two yes i've seen three i do not (laughs) recommend it um although I'm going to stick with Godfather and Godfather Part 2. And here's yeah. why. If you haven't seen this movie or movies, you have to. Mm-hmm. Not only, I was also inspired by you know, the, the fact that Heat was talked about uh, this week uh, because Al Pacino and Robert De Niro, these were their breakout roles or some, you know, some of their breakout roles, Al Pacino for sure. Uh, and I, I find that people don't give these movies an opportunity these days because, again, they think they have to be mob movie fans, and they don't. Uh, this is a look at not just the mafia, but it's a look at family. It's a look mm-hmm. at, you know, the the dynamic of a father. Tr- I mean, of a son trying to help his father. I mean, the story is 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 classic in terms of familial relationships and so forth and so on. And so. Um, Again, I feel like I'm, I'm not giving it enough gravitas, these two movies. But if you have not yet seen The Godfather and The Godfather Part Two, I definitely encourage you to do so. I remind you that they're out there. If you do end up uh, seeing Godfather Part Three, you, you almost have to because it's there. Uh, just don't come crying to me. So, um, yeah, Francis Ford Coppola. Um, in, in these three movies, he has his masterpieces and his absolute bungles all rolled up into one so uh, yeah make sure you check them out the godfather and the godfather part two that's this week's real time rewind and uh, we encourage you to check them out all right we are going to remind you once again we are on facebook and we are on instagram just look up real to real talk and you will find us let us know what you'd like us to watch what you think of the show and all that fun stuff and you can also see what we're watching what we're going to be talking about in future episodes and also what we've talked about in past episodes so get out there give us uh, some love and we'll love you right back. Also, if you're on YouTube, we thank you for watching. We ask that you please give the video a like. It's right there. It's right there in front of you. You're looking at it right now. Uh, But also click that subscribe button and check out the notification bell so you can always know when our episodes land here on YouTube. Uh, We thank you so much for watching. All right. 
We like to do week to week what we call real quick reviews. And we've got a few this week uh, I'm excited to talk about. So, Paul, I'll turn it over to you to get us started. You want me to start? Okay, so the impetus for Zombie Week was because we had a real quick review for uh, Hashtag Alive, Mm -hmm. uh, a Korean zombie movie, um, writing the uh, coattails of uh, Train to Busan as awesome uh, Korean zombie movies. Uh, You know, look, I'll be honest, this one, I loved the concept of sort of uh, a a, a zombie movie making use of... uh, of, of, of social media as mm-hmm. like a way for people to, to communicate. I don't think they realize that enough. That's my big qualm with this movie. Like okay. as a zombie movie, it's fine. Um, I think it was trying to establish itself as slightly different in a certain way. And it just never actually did that. Uh, but that's okay. So like, if you're, if you want just a, a solid zombie flick, a hashtag alive, 100% works. Um, just don't expect something I, I don't think this was like a breakthrough movie like train to busan is like really sort of a breakthrough movie like it's there's something really special about train to busan this isn't that but it's good uh it came out uh like i think three weeks ago on netflix it might have been a little longer than that but uh there we yeah. are what would you think about it sergio i really enjoyed it i i have quickly over the course of these two films that you mentioned train to busan and also this one hashtag alive have quickly become a big fan of South Korean zombie films because South Korea, see, here's my thing about zombie movies. And, and you, made, you made mention earlier about, when you were talking about Dead Snow, you talked about how you can't both, if, if the zombie can crush a skull, you shouldn't be able to hold him off with a shovel. I need right. a movie who's consistent with the zombies. And exactly. if you go back to the classics, Night of the Living Dead and so forth, you have the slow plotting zombies. And then you have the the fast zombies of other films. World and, Z, you know, yeah. The Walking Dead does a great, yeah, the World War Z is a great example of, you know, zombies that are way too fast. Um, and then you've got Walking Dead as a show that sort of mixes them all up. But what I love about South Korean zombie films and just the two that I watch and I'm going to keep watching more uh, because I love zombie films. Not a big fan of the horror genre, but I love me some zombie films. Um, so there you go there's a consistency in these two films as to how the zombies are portrayed even in the imagery they don't feel the need to change too much about what the zombies look like uh i am not a fan of films that make those decisions well horror zombies are going to look different no just there's people dead people are dead people you know i mean and so yeah uh i very much love hashtag alive um I didn't have too much issue with the social media thing because I didn't really put that much thought into it until the very last scene where I, where I did have the thought of like, so only the people who were on social media are going to get saved. And that was sort of the lingering thought that I had left, but as a film, 100% enjoyable and uh, one that I definitely would recommend. So absolutely. And are we doing taco ratings on real quick? Sure. Do it. Yeah. I'll give it a strong four. I gave it a strong strong three. I, I, okay. give, I give it a strong three. Yeah. Cool. I, I, yeah. Again, just, it's super good, but I didn't think it did anything like, oh my gosh, I can't, you know, there was no like, yeah. ah, like yeah. a lot of unrealized stuff. That was my Gotcha. Favorite. Gotcha. That makes sense. Well, Paul, my if I may, what I'd like to do is do a do you want quick me to do- shout out to one. And then because we're in the month of October, maybe okay. you finish you out with your last one. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. We'll so do it that I, I just want to throw, uh, since we're calling them real quick reviews, I'll make it real quick. I want to throw a quick shout out to a movie that was released uh, in July of this year called The Outpost. Uh, It is based on a book by one of my favorite journalists, Jake Tapper, who wrote about um, an outpost in Afghanistan where um, several, uh, not well, several lives were lost of uh, American military. Um, the, The quick sort of synopsis of the story is this is an outpost that was literally placed within the valley uh of the mountains of, of kush i mean there were literally there they had no high ground the, the the soldiers that were stationed uh at this outpost there was there's really no explanation for why they were in such an indefensible position uh but the the book that jake tapper wrote was made into a film by rod lurie who uh who directed the contender uh and also uh gosh there's one other why can't i think of it uh but uh, great films uh, in their right. He's got he's got quite a filmography, but he uh, directed the Outpost. It's uh, it's one of the most intense war films. Uh, if 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 you're watching and you've seen Black Hawk Down, and if you thought if you thought that was an intense film, this way exceeds it. 
Um, yeah, it's it's quite intense, quite well. And and the story is the story of how these men, um, had, their only mission to take the literal tagline off of the poster was to survive because they was they were literally in a position that could not be well defended. And so, uh, lots of um, you know true tr you know based on a true story. The book I'm looking forward to reading. Uh, and the film really leaves a mark. Uh, it was quite the gut punch. And uh, but a great, a very well done film. Very well done film. Uh, I'm a big uh, fan of Rod Lurie, and I'm going to continue watching some of his films as a result. So uh, that is my contribution, Paul. I'll throw it back to you uh, for your next film. It's October. We got Halloween going on. So Netflix is coming out with a whole bunch of uh, fun Halloween fare for adults and for the whole family. And I decided to watch one that was for the whole family and I regretted it. It was uh, Adam Sandler's <laughs> most recent uh, offering, Hubie Halloween, which is basically like Waterboy 2, uh, Now mm. We Have Soup. Um, I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not even kidding. Like, so, <laughs> I don't know. Look, uh, we had a little mini conversation on Adam Sandler uh, before we started recording and- yeah. You're, you're either at the point in your life where certainly you've seen an Adam Sandler movie and you have either decided I am all in on anything Adam Sandler does, no matter how recycled it feels, I am yeah. just going to enjoy it because he knows that they're not good. He knows that the jokes are recycled. All of the actors, and he gets great actors to show up in his movies. This one has Ray Liotta and, and the standard gang of Saturday Night Live alum that he gets and Kevin James. Um, all of these folks know the story of these, you know, and that might work for you. It doesn't work for me. I want something new. I want something slightly different, not just completely the same thing. And so this is just an Adam Sandler movie that is Halloween based. And so, you know, I mean, yeah, I don't, I have nothing more to say on that. Yeah. Uh, how many tacos would you give a Paul? Two. I mean, it's not offensively horrible. You know, and there are a couple things that, you know, even though they're retreads of a bazillion other things that are mildly entertaining, but it's just like, <sighs> Adam Sandler, I remember when like you were awesome and people were looking forward to see you do things and then yeah. they stopped and, but you kept doing things. <laughs> I don't know how you. I, yeah, I don't know how y'all feel about Will Ferrell, but Will Ferrell was going down that path for a while, and then he's had some interesting choices that he's made. And Adam Sandler has made one solid choice. Yeah, uh, uncut gems. Yeah. Yeah, and and but so I when you I will say two Halloween. Okay. I will say two because oh, I right. want to throw a Punch Drunk Love in there, which I absolutely love. Like Punch yeah. Drunk Love is my favorite and my second favorite uh, Paul Thomas Anderson movie. So gotcha. um, Punch Drunk Love is amazing. And he, quite frankly, it makes that movie like that movie isn't remotely as good with anybody else. Like there are other characters that Adam Sandler can play. I don't understand why this is the one that he feels like he yeah. needs to do over and over yeah i mean it's been, and and that's the thing when i see him in uncut gems and and you know the way you're describing punch drunk love susan i don't know if you're familiar with that one um Ooh. i think to myself he can make good decisions mm -hmm. so he's purposefully making the movies he's making and, and good for him if that's the case yeah uh but i was done after happy gilmore and so um everything i've even given a try since and it's like oh and so i saw the trailer and and i'm gonna leave this one to paul and so, yep. so Paul, thank you for taking one for the team. Yeah, uh, I mean, look, again, if, if your kids like Adam Sandler movies or you like them, please watch it. Support movies. Yeah. Maya Rudolph is great in it, as she is always. And, and you get to see people that you don't normally get to see in movies because, you know. But, yeah. you know, and Steve Buscemi is Steve Buscemi. And his whole storyline is... 
Yeah. Th- and that, I will say that like Adam Sandler knows how to give Steve Buscemi wacky things to do that always totally work. So that's the yeah. one thing about this movie. That's why it gets two tacos is because they always know how to use Steve Buscemi in ways that just <laughs> nobody else is going to ever use Steve Buscemi. And it's always uh, fun. Talk about a treasure. Steve Buscemi. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, that uh, brings us to the close of this week's real quick reviews. Make sure you uh, get out there, watch movies, tell us what you're watching. And uh, who knows, you might convince us to watch a few. Uh, Susan, as we uh, as we kind of start to wrap things up, I'm curious, uh, are there any movies on the horizon you're looking forward to watching? A few. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got a few planned out. Like I said, I had um, I had one planned for, for my um susan finally saw this week that i'm saving for next week um fun times fun times and paul i don't know how you do it but now that we have an actual number of movies you've seen i you know i tip my hat to you sir i i i love that you're that well watched and uh You'll have to tell me how you track all this stuff. So <laughs> there's an app. There's an app for that. There's an app for everything, isn't there? Yeah. So <laughs> it, there's a new social media thing called Letterboxd, and okay. it's. Is I it just a matter like, of clicking the ones that you've seen, or something like that? You can either click the ones you've seen, or like give them ratings. I actually went through the, the thing and actually gave all the ones I've seen ratings, and like oh. it took me several days because it like. <laughs> I went backwards year by year and at, at so, and like you li- like for the ones from like the nine eighties, nineties and two thousands, like I, I had to scroll through a lot of stuff to get. And like, I know there's more that I, I just, at some point you reach a point where it's like, all right, if it's not this far up the list, I'm, I haven't seen it or I don't mm. care that I've seen it. I'm not rating it. They do a pretty good job of, of front loading, it based off of popularity, both by box office and, you know, but every once in a while, like something would be like, why is this way back here? I would have been so mad if I didn't get to rate this one. Boom. But yeah, you can just like say I've seen it or I haven't seen it or I liked it. And I haven't liked it. I actually did rate them all because I'm a maniac. So um, <laughs> you're committed. But, I love it. The best kind. The yeah. best kind. <laughs> you're our maniac and we love it. There you so. go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that brings us to the close of another episode of Real to Real Talk. We thank you all so much for joining us as you do week to week. We look forward to your thoughts in the comments down below here on YouTube. Don't forget, hit subscribe, hit the uh, notification bell, and you'll know when our episodes are coming up next. To echo a thought, it is October, so I have a feeling we've got more uh, scary movies coming your way. So we look forward to next time. Remember, you're awesome. You're amazing. And the world's a better place because you are in it. Have a wonderful week and we'll see you next time on Real to Real Talk.